Hello and welcome to my review of the LEGO Star Wars UCS Venator Class Republic Attack Cruiser. The set number is 75367 and if we take the three out of the middle that is actually Captain Rex's CT number, a minifigure that is aptly included in the set. We have 5,374 pieces and the retail price on this thing is a whopping $650. They got the correct Republic logo on the box and while the black box art can be boring for some, the Venator certainly presents nicely on the frontier. On the left side of the box we have another great shot of it alongside the 20th anniversary of the Clone Wars logo. The right side of the box shows off a very nice looking rear. The top of the box, of course, shows the top of the Venator. And dare I look at the bottom of the box? Yep bottom of the Venator. On the back of the box, we're given the dimensions for the build, but the width is omitted. That's 22 inches, just in case you needed to know. And then we see multiple Clone Wars TV show shots of this flagship Venator, primarily denoted by the red bridge. Now the unboxing experience for UCS sets of this size and price typically is pretty special. So I'm expecting something nice inside of here. Oh well, this is actually really good. I'm half surprised it's as good as it is. Wow, I'm gonna cry. This is, this is really good, I'm gonna cry. So on these boxes, we actually have movie stills from Revenge of the Sith. It looks gorgeous. I am just blown away by how good it is. And then flipping them over, we actually have even more art on the other side with more stills from the movie here. It's just incredible that they went this far. And then on the front of both boxes, it has the title of the set. It just looks so nice to have packaging like this for a prequel set, it just makes me happy. So in the first box, it looks like we have two distinct instruction manuals, as well as our sticker sheet with six stickers. Aha. In total, you have four instruction manuals, and two of them are supposed to line up to create one big picture of a Venator, but they didn't do it properly, and as you can see, the Republic logos are offset. Inside of the first book, you'll find a good read about the Venator, as well as a guide on how to pick up your UCS Venator, which we will try later. Otherwise, the instructions are completely normal with nothing else interspliced. Lastly, you're looking at 48 numbered bags in this one. Let's get into the finished product. The printed display card looks awesome. I love that they're printing these now. It just looks way better than the sticker did outside of the dimple in the middle. I really do hope they change that in the future. Now flanking the display card are your minifigs and a brick. That brick is the 20th anniversary Clone Wars brick, which is a great inclusion. It's exclusive to this Venator and will never be seen in another set again. And in the instruction manual, Lego actually says the same thing about the minifigs. Captain Rex and Admiral Yularen are exclusive to this set. It's in writing, which should mean that would apply forever. Now you can certainly expect different variations of these in the future, but these specific prints will remain exclusive according to the book. Diving into Captain Rex first here, a lot of people have waited a long time to get this minifigure and seeing him come in a $650 set is probably disheartening to some that didn't want to buy a $650 set to get Captain Rex. And I certainly sympathize with that, but I do expect Captain Rex to come in a cheaper set in the future. Now the camp that I'm in is the one that this is a $650 set and this minifigure isn't the quality you would expect for a $650 set, other than one thing, the arm printing. The arm printing on this minifig is just about perfect. It goes right up to the wrist and it goes right up to the shoulder, so it's printed the entire length of the arm. It's got an incredible amount of detail on both sides, and that's where the good things I have to say about his armor stop. The misplaced holes and accompanying warts continue to look ridiculous here and cause the rangefinder to sit way too high. The ammo pouch on the torso, per the animated source material this is based on, is just way too large, as is the cloth pauldron, which LEGO created a smaller version of two years ago for the artillery trooper, and if used here, it would be more accurate, and it would allow you to see that great arm print that is now completely hidden. And speaking of cloth, you won't find a cloth camo on this figure, you'll just find the printed on slivers of his waist cape. Overall, the rest of the standard clone armor print design is very good, like the feet, the jag eyes are a nice addition on top of the helmet, as well are the tally marks. And I'll leave on a real high note for this Captain Rex with the unique face print with the inhibitor chip bandage on his forehead. It looks amazing. Hopefully in the future, they can put it on a better figure. Anyway, this is our first Clone Wars Admiral Yularen. He is a really good looking figure with dual molded legs, just makes it look extra good to you. And he does end up with two unique face prints, one of which has the really cool raised eyebrow. And after far too many years of waiting, it's my pleasure to show you the Venator. I still can't believe what I'm looking at. In the great year of our Lord, 2023, Lego has blessed us with a UCS Venator, and it looks amazing. Starting in close on the bridge, it's in a dark red color, which was very unexpected as the typical color for a Venator bridge is gray. But the flagship Venators do have a red bridge, which certainly does stand out. And the strips of translucent blue throughout the bridge and below add a nice splash of color, but also a really great 
sense of scale as each of those should be representing one floor, essentially. It's quite an imposing look, although there are some people that say they see Jar Jar's eyes when they look into the bridge. Now the bridges are pretty strongly attached to the rest of the ship, you give it a good shake and it shouldn't be going anywhere. Now the rest of the area below that is really nicely detailed. They were able to give it a lot of texture, you can see some masonry bricks, a lot of sloped pieces, some grill pieces, some nice tiles mixed in there. Overall just a beautiful look and it's symmetrical so it's the exact same on the other side. The front portion here slopes very nicely into the center of the Venator and I will say these are kind of loosely attached so they can shake a little bit but they create a very good looking design. The backside by comparison is seemingly devoid of detail, but it is accurate. It is supposed to look like this. It just compared to the front feels a lot cleaner, which is odd. Now flowing a little further back, you actually have the tail end of the Venator, and this is where you have one of your big stickers on the set. It does a reasonable job of splitting the colors up, but the colors aren't perfect matches, which will always be distracting. But there is a really nice angle to this section, and I'm very happy with how it looks. The engines are clearly a massive W on this set. They look really good, very imposing, and very very accurate. The metallic gray was an amazing color choice that really pops on the back end of this ship. The blue thrust looks really nice, and there were some concerns about the engine sagging, but I think I can pretty well put those to rest here. They don't sag very much at all. Now, don't get me wrong, the very back end of the biggest engines absolutely do sag ever so slightly. But to mitigate sag during the building process, you actually connect this engine also to the middle section there, and so that basically gets rid of most of the engine sag that would otherwise be present and so even if it is there ever so slightly it is not something that bothers me and I think they look incredible. Now on each side of the Venator are four heavy turbo laser turrets. They sit in slightly recessed pockets on top of the Venator and they generally look very good. They do possess the ability to swivel and point up and down. However, it has to be done rather manually. Given they clearly weren't made for movement though, I would suggest just leaving them as is or posing them all as you build it and leaving them however you'd like. Just below the turbo lasers, we have the red stripes and I think it's a pretty good pattern they've got going on here for the side panel of the Venator and it is slightly raised above the base layer of armor of course because that's just how it had to be done but overall looks really nice. Looking below that you can see some amazing greebling for the side of the Venator as well as a little bit more of that translucent blue worked into the design on the side of the Venator that again representing basically a floor each time you see a little sliver of it and this is the one place the Venator isn't symmetrical. You can see one closed off docking bay on this side but on the other side of the build it's wide open and you'll see the micro scale Republic gunship here, which the designer says is a nod to his original UCS Republic gunship from a couple years ago, but I think it looks more like an A-Wing. It's a bad micro-scale inclusion, honestly. I think it would have been better without it. It's honestly just a little distracting because of how odd it does look. Looking at more of the siding on the Venator, you can see some more of the amazing greebling going on that just adds a ton of texture on the side, and then we finally get to the giant cannons sticking out. Now the size on these things are accurate, but they definitely do stick out on the design and I can definitely see some people wanting to take them off because they look a bit distracting. And they do possess no functionality either, they are just stuck on there, although they are very easy to knock off. Looking further along the side, you'll just see more standard greebling and it does look very good leading us to the front of the Venator. Now the front is almost perfectly finished off, you don't have any massive or distracting gaps and it's properly oh so slightly rounded at the tip. And now we get to talk about one of the most controversial points on this Venator and that is the red stripe and the lack of functionality within it as a lot of people were hoping it would open up to show a micro scale hangar bay. Now that was not something I expected this UCS Venator to provide and ultimately it doesn't. I don't really see where the space would have been inside of here nor how the functionality in the design would work. I think if you have the opportunity to build this for yourself you'll see it just doesn't really make a lot of sense that that could work here. Honestly the biggest issue I have with the stripe is that it has this little break in the design where it cuts in and then continues on instead of being just one big red stripe. Now this is accurate to the flagship model of Venator that we have here, but my preferred design is the Revenge of the Sith one where it doesn't have the break in the line. Now something I thought I would really hate on this Venator is the texture at the front here. I thought it would be a more flat design, less dark gray included on the front, and I really thought I wouldn't like the way that it looks, but having seen it and held it and built it in person, it looks fine. Dang good actually at the front. I don't know why, but with the UCS Venator I anticipated it to be a relatively flat design and there's just so much more 
texture in this like front section of paneling than I expected. I'm pleasantly surprised with the inclusion and how much I like it, so very good there. Now, something I'm not pleasantly surprised by is the sticker color on top of the Venator here. Like I mentioned on the back, the sticker color didn't seem right, and it's a lot more apparent up here where you can see kind of the purplish gray right next to the light bluish gray, and it doesn't look good. I mean, that would look better just without the sticker, but here you need the Republic logo. A lot of people wanted this to be printed, and now I kind of agree because the colors just look so off to me side by side. Now showing off the bottom of the Venator is a bit tricky and I might use the product images from lego.com to help me out here, but you can see it's generally a very studded design. They didn't do too much on the bottom and they definitely didn't need to as you won't be seeing it most of the time. But there is a fair amount of detail in the back middle of the underside, including the use of a Lego roller coaster track piece. Other than that, you basically have a red stripe that runs up the middle. It's a no frills underside. Now the last topic I wanna to tackle about this set is the overall stability both with the stand and when picking it up. The stand is super stable. It's got two distinct points that make contact with the ground and it definitely holds the model really nicely. I think now's a great time to bring in the 2019 UCS Imperial Star Destroyer where I found the stand to be a bit wobbly. If you started to twist the model it would kind of contort weirdly and the stand would feel like it's breaking. That's just not the case on the UCS Venator. It definitely feels like a lot more thought went into how the stand would connect with the frame thus making it far more sturdy. We'll also take a second here to appreciate the difference in size between these two models, and if you subscribe to my channel, you won't miss the upcoming comparison between these two sets. Now when it comes to handling the model, I have found this to be incredibly sturdy, especially when compared to that 2019 Star Destroyer. It feels like the panels are always going to break when I pick up that 2019 Star Destroyer, but for this Venator, I definitely don't have that fear. It's also a little bit lighter, which just generally helps make it easier to move as well, but it just feels a lot more structurally sound because of how tight the panels seem to be to the frame. Ultimately, this Venator is a very sturdy build when it comes to moving it around, which is a pleasant surprise. I think I'm still in shock over the idea that this set even exists, let alone the fact that it's right in front of me right now, finally, after all of these years. Captain Rex stickers and small pieces that fall off being the highlight flaws that I see in this model. Some people will point out the lack of any interior, but I honestly just don't see that as a flaw. But if you're a fan of LEGO Star Wars The Clone Wars, I feel like this is a pretty obvious must-have LEGO Star Wars set for any serious collector. It's by far the most expensive LEGO Star Wars prequel era set that we have ever had. I think this set in some ways shows the designers really starting to appreciate the prequels for how great they are. I'm just absolutely in love here. I think they did a lot of things right, and if the Rex was good, honestly, I'd be giving this a 10 out of 10, but it's going to be a 9.4 out of 10 from me. So let me know what you think about the UCS Venator in the comments section below. Leave a like if you're happy this set even exists, and you can check out more 2023 LEGO Star Wars set reviews on the end screen now.